Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to Harper University and the welcome is about the only thing that is warm because it is absolutely Baltic here. This is the second in a very special Bucks doubleheader. Hartbury versus Durham. We've already had the Women's National League match where Durham came from the north and left with all five points. They were 31-14 victors over Hartbury and they go to the top of the league. The Durham men's team are already at the top of the league defending the title they won. What seems like an eternity ago. There's been a slight change of venue. Usually we're about 50 yards that way at the Alpas Arena. Instead, we are on this brand new artificial pitch. They've done an incredible job to make sure we've got an event today. This will be the fourth game that has been played. They've gone through all the levels, men's and women's, but we end the day with what I consider to be the best league in the country. And two of the best teams as well. Hartbury, of course, the last team to win the trophy at Twickenham. Durham, the last team to win the league title. Hartbury currently sit fifth in the table. Durham currently sit top. Both teams looking for victory to build some momentum into the Christmas break. Uh, lots to look forward to today. It is the 8th of December, the day that Bucks and many organisations are celebrating the Rainbow Laces campaign, where we show everybody that sport, that rugby in general is for everyone. The LGBTQIA plus community are all on board and we are too. Plenty of things have been going on uh, as one of the things that we'd like to use to shine light on the Rainbow Laces campaign is the fact that Craig Maxwell Keys will referee the match today. International referee, premiership referee, we might even hear from him at some point. One thing we will hear is his whistle as he will be out in the middle. The match will be kicking off shortly. It is not to be missed. Thank you for joining us wherever you're watching around the world. I hope that you're a lot warmer than I am. Uh, to kick things off though, let's hear from one of the great men of Buck Super Rugby. This is Durham's Alex Kay. The last time I had a conversation with you here, you'd just been presented with the trophy as Buck Super Rugby champions. A lot's happened since then, but we're having this conversation. You're top of the league again. You're definitely doing something right in Durham. Yeah, yeah I think a, a lot of it is the boys just working really hard. You know, their attitude and, and their efforts been like three million percent. I, I can't, uh, you know, congratulate them well enough for that. And, uh, you know, that's all we can ask them to do. Our job's not, you know, to bring that hard work. That's their job and that's what they've been doing. So really pleased with them. And it's interesting to look back at that team sheet because, of course, it was essentially a second team you brought down to Hartbury last time for the playoffs mm. that never happened. Mm. But a lot of those players now, a few years on, they've earned the right to wear the first team jersey mm. and to try and take that jersey to the next level. You must be very proud of that group. Yeah, I think that's probably part of what we have to do a lot at Durham. And, you know, they graduate up and they go on to the second team. Then some guys like Fitz Harden over the years started in the fourth team. So that, that's, that's all we can do, you know. Let's talk uh, about the present day then. Uh, you had that draw against Cardiff Met, first game of the season. No one was sure exactly how anyone was going to go. Since then, you've gone from strength to strength. You've put a great winning run together. Now you've got Hartbury tonight with a chance to extend that lead as we enter into the Christmas break. Couldn't have gone a lot better, really, could it? No, I, I, we, we've, the results have sat on the right side for us. Uh, we've beaten the side to a... Uh, what I call gold standard side to a top five so yeah if we can keep doing that then we'll be in a good place we're just looking at week to week at the moment don't like to get ahead of ourselves and uh, you know good to hear them trying to drown us out here yeah yeah really. exactly you talk about gold standard sides in, in terms of university rugby Hartbury are certainly up there they're really revving the engine behind you in the warm-up now what are you expecting from them this evening and in terms of a scalp if you were to win where does Hartbury rank for you oh, number one they're always hard to play and you know every game with them's a, a cup final equally I think they'll approach us after the last few years of thinking we're going to be a good scalp for them so you know, it's going to be, I would think it'd be a cracking game of rugby. Hopefully the weather stays better than it is and uh, and we can go out and play some footy. Fingers crossed. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Cheers. I'm Fred Davies, uh, Durham University and I play hooker. Cy uh, I am the performance rugby coach from the University of Durham. Uh, rugby journey, okay, so I went to Oakham School um, in Rutland, so not far from here now. Uh, 
played there, captain the side in my, in my final year. Um, from there, I was, I was also lucky to be in the Northampton Saints Academy, um, so I played quite a bit of rugby there. Um, on leaving school, I, I managed to pick up a contract out in, in Australia, uh, eastern suburbs, um, which, was, which was a lot of fun. I had the shoot shield there, and it was more of a lifestyle change more than anything. Uh, and then on coming back, I had a deferred year at, at, straight into Durham, so it's uh, been there ever since. It's vital. It's, it's such a good extra pathway for the late developer or for even the early developer that's got a serious ambition academically or outside rugby. Um, coming together and forming Buck Super Rugby's made sure that we've got the guaranteed quality of opposition alongside the guaranteed opportunity of, of off-field development. Big crowds, pressure events, high quality games. It, it's, it's such a great grounding for an entry into high level rugby, whether that be premiership, championship or, or whatever. Definitely be that sort of Leeds Beckett game um, at the end of that uh, of my second year when we, we managed to clinch the title. Um, sheer euphoria more than anything. <laughs> I mean, Bucks Soup is a brutal, brutal league. Um, playing through through a national competition all over, and there's, someone's put some Welsh sides in there now, so it's even more travelling <laughs> from up from up from Durham. So, no, winning that was was pretty special, and we had a pretty special few days after that, as you can imagine. So, um, no, that would definitely have to be up there. I'll go uh, honesty, intensity, and fun. Tom Brooker, played for Hartbury and a back row. Dan Murphy, Hartbury University. I like just, just getting the, with the lads, really. There's not like one individual moment that I've been like, wow. It's just getting together and watching. So I I've, I've didn't have the opportunity to play for the first team two years ago. It was just, you'd play your game, you'd win, you'd come and watch, go get into the Al Pass and just watch your mates play and get behind them. Everyone raises their game a little bit when they play Hartbury, um, which is great. For us, we've got to be on the top of our game week in, week out. Um, and it's keeping that consistency there. And, and that's the strength of the league as well. It's uh, really competitive, um, 10 sides that really go at it and it's, it's, a, it's a great competition. Get everyone involved, kind of, it's not, I'm not the only leader on the pitch. I like to get, have a group of boys, but I want everyone to have their say. And just, if someone's got something to say, make sure that it's not just coming from me, it's coming from them to let make, build that team environment. So it's not just me telling everyone how it should be, it's everyone buying in and getting that culture within to build. Dream, nurture, achieve. The scene is set and the Bucks Super Rugby season continues. It is nightfall here at Hartbury. The wind has temporarily died down, but it will be temporary because it's been swirling around here all evening. The rain has come and gone but we do have a fixture. The storm has not stopped the progress of this great league. And this is one of the great rivalries. Hartbury versus Durham. Hartbury looking to break into that top four. You get in the top four, you get a home draw for the quarter final. We're only halfway through the season, but this is certainly something that'll be on the team's minds. Hartbury have been notoriously slow starters. The last time they lifted the trophy, there was talk after a few games as to whether or not they'd even reached the playoffs. They did. They gathered momentum. They did it the hard way and they left as champions. Durham, the defending league champions, spoke to Alex Key earlier about the last time they were here and they sent a team with some of the main players rested, some of the players that had brought them the championship title with the playoffs in mind. Those playoffs, of course, never happened. But the country's most competitive league is back underway. It's gathering momentum and we've got another fantastic 80 minutes of rugby to look forward to this evening. In terms of team news, Hartbury, of course, have a team full of academy players, Gloucester and Bristol Bears. They've even got a lineup so star-studded that they've got Lennon and McCartney at number eight and number nine. Ewan Glynn 
gets his fourth consecutive start at fullback, having not been involved this season prior. Stan Norman has been pretty much ever present on the right wing. Matthew McNabb and Isaac Marsh add a lot of sparkle in the centres. Just the one Ben Solomon in the front row today. He's at loose head, is Totti, with Christian de Oliveira on the tight head side. Got big can Hollenstein to come off the bench as well. Scott Davis, an open side flanker, has already got three tries to his name. One of the most prolific back rowers in the league. Durham arrive here as league leaders. Since that draw against Cardiff Met, they have been pretty much unstoppable. Built off a pack that mean business. The front row, Monty Royston, Fred Davis, the captain, and Matt Woodward. Fred Davis scored his 26th try of Buck Super Rugby last week at Cardiff Met. Got a hat-trick as well. That made him Buck Super Rugby's highest ever try scorer in the league format. He only needs three more, and he beats Tom Doughty's record as the overall leading try scorer in the history of Buck Super Rugby. Ewan Murphy, versatile second rower and back rower, signed with Sail Sharks, bit of a superstar. He's in the lock today, alongside Marin Hoos, the Dutchman, one of the most recognisable second rowers in the competition. Patrick Bishop, with the wind in his sails, could reach 100 bucks super rugby points this season. He is poised on 87. And speaking of try scorers, Harry Craven, eight tries from scrum half this season for Durham's number nine. Keep an eye on him sniping around the breakdown. So Durham on the way out. Freddie Davis leads them out. Described earlier in the season as looking like a Spitfire pilot made in a lab. He's having a heck of a season, as are the rest of the team in Palatinate but I can hear the drum banging and the noise level rising, which must mean only one thing, Hartbury on the way out. Spoke to Dan Murphy earlier and he bemoaned the fact that they didn't take their opportunities against Loughborough. They said that game, or he said that game was there for the winning. Loughborough fired four shots, scored four tries and ended up with a bonus point win. If Hartbury are going to get anything from this fixture against the league leader, they need to be accurate. They're going to receive the kickoff. Durham in those platinate jerseys, attacking the try line, away to the right, attacking into a very stiff wind. Challenging conditions, who will manage them best? Patrick Bishop gets us underway, hangs that one in the wind, and it's going to come back. Hartbury's way, already an advantage. The first decision for referee Craig Maxwell Keys. Guesting in the middle this evening. Great to have one of the country's top referees on this rainbow laces fixture. And the Hartbury supporters finding their voices as well. Even the conditions can't put the faithful off as that kick misses touch but cause a little bit of chaos. Ewan Glynn just watches that go over the line. It'll be a restart from the goal line and I can expect some distance on this as well given the wind behind Hartbury. That keeps you up to date with the conditions throughout the match because they are very, very changeable. In fact, it's going to be Oscar Lennon to get us restarted. He's going to aim for the touchline and to try and split the gap between the two. We've got Will Morris there, the fullback in the red. This Sol Hyde, now a third-year student, broke into the first team as a fresher. Oh, that box kick catching Ewan Glynn in no man's land. He shunted that one forward, and this will be our first look at the set piece. Really looking forward to the scrum contest this evening, particularly the front row. Royston Davis and Woodward. Matt Woodward, a Newcastle University undergrad, classic tight head, gets incredibly low for a big man. Fred Davis, of course, plenty said about him. 
Monty Royston, another of those players who's earned their right in the first team, coming through the squads. As for Hartbury, you've got Ben Solomon, former Harlequins, now involved with Bristol Bears, Ethan Hunt, signed with Gloucester Rugby. And then Christian Oliveira. But we're not going to see it because it's a free kick and a tap and go from Harry Craven. Oh, we'll reset that. Craven searching for his ninth try. Loves to get the tempo going, Harry Craven. Durham on another look at the scrum. I think that's always going to happen when you've got a hooker in charge. Any chance for the set piece. So our second look at the scrum, the first resulted in a free kick. And this is where we find ourselves. Nobody on the blind side for Durham. Paul Brown, the right winger. He stood on the inside line of Patrick Bishop. And that is a solid scrum. So it does come out in Sol Hyde as it first receive a good carry, then a good tackle. Isaac Marsh, 12 on 12, big shots already. Woodward with the carry. Got some backs in there, so Will Morris is out of position. Durham on the verge of the heartbreak 22. Here's Ewan Murphy. Another big shot in midfield. Good feet there from Harry Craven. There's Murphy again. Oh, gets drilled back. Big shot there. Scott Davis that time, the open side. Durham still on the ball, but losing ground, working it up the short side. There's Bishop there, shunts it on to his left winger, Nick Jonas. Plenty of musical names involved. As well as, of course, we've mentioned Lennon and McCartney, Nick Jonas. No Tom Fletcher for Durham this evening. Bishop onto Willis. McNabb making the tackle for Hartbury. Nudge in behind, gets the bounce. Paul Brown got hands on it, but the ball had already gone dead, so it will be Hartbury ball inside their own 22. We've had a look at the scrum, both teams look solid. What's the line out looking like? Ethan Hunt, the hooker. Made his Gloucester rugby debut at the stoop against Harlequins last season. Won ace here with Hartbury. That is a well-trodden pathway from college success here at Hartbury all the way to the Premiership. But more and more, we're seeing Buck Super Rugby as the stepping stone to greatness. Mistake there, though, from Lennon. Ball was taken back into the 22. So it's gone out on the full and will be Durham ball. Some reimagined chants from the Hartbury faithful. Harry Craven receiving some medical attention. This is the time of year where, unfortunately, a few injuries start to strike. The weather changes, the toll of a very busy season starts to catch up. This is the 10th game of Buck Super Rugby for a lot of these players, some of the clubs as well. Players that have been turning out on a Saturday in various levels. Loughborough, of course, playing in National 2. Cardiff Met playing in the Welsh Championship. At Exeter in the Southwest Divisions. A lot of these Hartbury players at some point in the season will get the chance to turn out in the Championship as well. And of course, the Premiership Cup with their respective Premiership sides. It's 
So Davis throwing into the lineup for the first time. That's a loose one, but that's been knocked on. Not once, but twice. And we'll go back for a scrum with a great attack in position for Durham. A few results have already been recorded today, most notably Exeter hitting 60 against Northumbria. We're really struggling with the face of BSR this season, Northumbria. We will be up there for a Buck Super Rugby live stream though, that's the one that unfortunately was cancelled against Cardiff University last week, but fear not Northumbria fans. 5th of February, Friday Night Lights will be up there in the new year. And in fact the first knock-on was off Durham, so it will be Hartbury Ball. That gets a kind bounce to Bishop, who goes in field to Morris, the fullback, hops once and twice off the left foot, then steps off the right, and he's tackled in between ten and halfway. Bishop in there making things tick again. Good carry on the left hand side by Jonas, but oh, he manages to stay in field. And you don't want to get tackled into touch over there in front of the Hartbury faithful either. But Hartbury do turn the ball over. Good initial hit there from Durham. Here's Ben Solomon. Good chop tackle on the loose head prop. Hartbury sending the heavies in. Fred Davis making a good tackle. It's been very physical already. Lennon puts that one into the night sky. That's a good take over the shoulder as well. Not particularly tall floodlights here, so the high kicks will disappear above the light that makes it very, very difficult to take, as we've just seen there. Brandon Wood. Knocked on one way, and then Paul Brown can't capitalise. So yeah, when the up and unders go up, they go higher than the lights, which means the poor receiver underneath it will completely lose sight of the ball temporarily, and we'll have to readjust accordingly. 15 metres in from touch, bang on the 10 metre is where Harry Craven will put the ball in again. Nobody on the blind side for Durham. Paul Brown to the right of the outside half, Patrick Bishop, Sol Hyde to the left. Penalty for the early shove from Hartbrick. Still, Durham nil, Hartbury nil. And this artificial pitch surrounded by a cage, so somebody's going to have to hop the fence to get that match ball. I think the most pleasing thing for Durham so far is the fact that they've played the territory well given that they're playing into this wind in the first half. Fred Davis wasn't that clean from the line-out last time. Finds the front man this time, and that's better. And they start the drive early. Davis gets his hands on the ball and assumes the position. Still moving forward, so they'll be allowed to play it. Going in search of try number 13 for the season. Davis put a long way out. Now he breaks. And Hartbury have some defending to do. They think they've turned that ball over, but instead it comes back and Jack Hill marches forward for Durham. Craven digs for it. Shipped on by Marin House. And House is there to clean up. Hartbury have done well to reset the defence. Penalty advantage coming, though. Most of the numbers to the right here for Durham. Oh, bodies clattering in. A couple looking pretty weary in the contact zone as well. That's Henry Wills. 
Still penalty advantage coming here for Durham as the big men pick and go. That was Ewan Murphy. Closing in right in front of the sticks. Very close indeed. Referee having a good look. Another penalty advantage coming. That's back-to-back -back penalties on the try line that Hartbury have conceded. But the score remains nil-nil. But for how long for? Best chance of the match so far. Another good tackle from Hartbury to keep Durham at bay. And we will go back for the penalty. Right in front of the sticks. And in fact, just to the right of the sticks by the time Craig Maxwell keys repositions. Harry Craven, ball in hand. Thinking about what decision to make. Easy three points on offer. But the set piece looking good. Are they more ambitious? So not rolling away is the decision. And it is Patrick Bishop to nudge for the corner. And Freddie Davis licks his lips. Well, we got an insight into the effectiveness and efficiency of the set piece last time for Durham. And they go to the front. Ewan Murphy gathers the ball. And now it gathers pace. Now oh, it's been sacked legally. But they're back up and running here, Durham. Over the line. Or oh, close to the line. Desperately close to the line. But no try. Harbury survive. Oh, knocked on over the line. What a let off for Hartbury. The score remains nil nil. Chance goes begging for Durham. But the danger not clear just yet. The wind just starts to pick up behind Hartbury, which will assist the clearing kick. Nobody defending tight on that blind side. Right winger Paul Brown has dropped deep to receive the kick. So should the scrum go in that direction, there could be a few free metres for Jamie McCartney. But then the squeeze comes on from the Durham scrum and instead McCartney does pick, goes to the open side. Really good tackle there by Henry Wills. The open side coming up quickly from the scrum. So Hartbury six metres from their own line in the first half. Still Durham nil, Hartbury nil. Paul Brown lets it bounce and now has the chance to counter-attack. Serious wheels when he gets going and he runs into contact. Kyle Williams has to make the tackle. Second rower on the winger. Not releasing, giving away another penalty. And Hartbury just cannot clear their lines at the moment. Another brilliant kick. Brave kick as well. Pretty much aimed it right at that corner flag. And Durham with another opportunity from the line out to open the scoring here at Hartbury. Davis again finds the man at the front. It is Murphy. And now they set. Davis with his hands on the ball. Slowly moving, but still moving, importantly for Durham. Plenty of bodies there. So it is the scrum half who goes and rolls and turns. And Harry Craven scores. A ninth try of the season for the Durham scrum half and when the set piece doesn't work they find another way Harry Craven 
There was the smallest of gaps for him to squeeze through. And he managed. Durham do manage to make their territorial advantage play. And it's Hartbury nil, Durham five. Sixteen minutes gone on our clock. Just a reminder that we're not linked in with the referee's watch. So as we get towards the end of the first and the second half, if your team's leading by a couple of points, don't get too excited. Or do get too excited. Because it means that there could still be plenty of excitement to come. The Bishop, 87 points for the season, remember? Well, twice the ball has fallen off the tee, so Monty Royston heads over to add a little bit of balance. Well, tries to draw that one in, but doesn't quite catch the wind. And the score remains Hartbury nil, Durham 5. Good game so far, Durham with the majority of the territory. I think they'll be pleased to have got that try because had they not, the wasted opportunities might have started to play on the mind. Hartbury defending well. Not a huge amount they could do about that excellent finish. Jack Hill receiving the kickoff. Making a good few metres. Now Craven. Watch that one. Hold up on the wind. Ewan Glynn. Little chip into space, and there is some space as well. Glynn chases his own kick and then nudges it on again. Glynn for a perfect response, and that is wonderful cover. And then the clearance kick to Joe Howard's underneath it. Good footwork from the blindside flanker. Goes straight into Paul Brown. What about that from you and Glynn, though? Marin House. Massive shot in midfield. You're going to have to make big shots if you're going to wear a pink scrum cap. Ben Solomon tips it on to the outside half. Winfield goes to ground and then intercepted. Oh, ho, ho, ho. there was a knock on spotted and just as well because Hartbury's blush is saved. Oh, that was just dished up in midfield and. Harry Craven, so close to being able to speed walk it in. Good opportunity though for Hartbury to go through some phases themselves. Finally, some territory. The scrum in between halfway and ten. Oscar Lennon, ball in hand. One try, one conversion so far this season for Oscar Lennon. He's one of the men involved with Bristol Bears. Formerly of Rugby Gogleth Cumbry as well, up in North Wales. Good, solid scrum. Short ball to Isaac Marsh. Lovely footwork from Marsh. Back to the scrum half. Lennon tries to free the hands for the offload. But it's scrappy. And Durham can reset. What about that from Isaac Marsh, though? Fabulous line from the 12. In fact, that 12 battle between him and Sol Hyde, something that a lot of Buck Super rugby fans really looking forward to this evening. Best chance of the match for Hartbury so far. Oscar Lennon takes a step back and leaves the forwards to go through the gears. Losing ground, but importantly for Hartbury, maintaining the ball. Big bodies committed there. Halfway in between the touchline and the goalpost. Ben Solomon puts his ample heft towards the game line. Got De Oliveira there looking to add his weight. He is a gargantuan creature. 
Scott Davis there adding weight. Ben Solomon again. Good leg drive from him, takes it back towards the posts. Here's Carl Williams. Now Howard. De Oliveira. Slow for heartbreak. Now Marsh takes it to the game line, pops it off and going back for a penalty advantage. Joey Winfield there on the wraparound. Not sure if that ball coming free from Marsh was deliberate or not. No, what's the option? Ethan Hunt thought about tapping and going. In fact, he is going to tap and go. Hunt. One try so far this season. In fact, he's making his way over to the touchline. So there is a change of decision. And there's going to be a nudge to the corner from Oscar Lennon. And Hartbury with a line out in the exact mirror position to the one that Durham scored the opening try from. That time it was a catch and drive that didn't come off and Harry Craven sniped around the outside. Best period of territory here for Hartbury. Can they make it stick? Danny Eight secures the ball. And Hartbury make their way towards the line, but Durham managed to break it up legally, says Craig Maxwell Keys. Marsh puts his head down, gets met by two big Palatinate defenders. There is De Oliveira. Howard. Good discipline so far by Durham in defence. Again, it's slow ball and three Durham defenders come up and smash the ball carrier for Hartbury. Oh, again, some of the collisions. Sol Hyde involved that time. Never shirks the contact zone. Now it goes up the blind side. You could throw a blanket over pretty much all of Hartbury's players apart from Ewan Glynn and Brandon Wood who've kept their width out here. But now it drives towards the line. Great momentum here for Hartbury. Held up, says the referee. Hartbury over the line for the first time, but unable to ground the ball. Craig Maxwell Keys in a great position. And it remains Hartbury nil, Durham five. For 24 minutes gone, approaching the final 15 minutes of the half. Bit of an injury rest over on the far side. Durham will get the game back underway with a drop out from under the sticks. Just a reminder of what's to come before Christmas in terms of Buck Super Rugby live streams. We're heading to Cardiff Arms Park next week for the Cardiff Clash. Cardiff University versus Cardiff Med. It's provided us with some classics over the last couple of seasons. Cardiff Met more established in the division than Cardiff University, but don't think that makes for a lopsided fixture. There have been some screamers. There'll be a great crowd there too. If you're in the area, tickets will be available, so come and join us. If not, then join us on the live stream. That'll be the last one before Christmas. If you're just tuning in, then you missed the Women's National League game. That was also Durham versus Hartbury. Durham went to the top of the league with a 31-14 victory. Five tries. Great bonus point win to halt Hartbury's progress after back-to-back -back wins for them. But we're back underway. And Jamie McCartney goes full force. And then there's a pick and go. And Ben Solomon. Oh, lovely footwork from the loose head prop. And Hartbury... Back within 10 metres of their first scores. That gone forward? Yes, it has. Well, not quite the try line begging, but the best opportunity for Hartbury to get over the whitewash. Just a little rushed pass has kept 
a blob in the scorebook. Darren 5, Hartbury 0. Casting my eye out to see who is where this evening. Luke Stratford carrying the water for Hartbury. Currently hooker and co-captain of Hartbury RFC. Former England students. One buck super rugby with Hartbury. That much talked about Hartbury versus Cardiff Met final. Scored the winning try when the clock was in the red. If you are new to Buck Super Rugby, then that is certainly a part of this relatively new but brilliant league's recent history that you should be au fait with. Cardiff Met looked down and out at half time, then battled back. team that contained the likes of Alex Dombrand, Luke Northmore, Alid Ward in the back row who incidentally is also playing his club rugby at Hartbury now in the championship along with other Buck Super Rugby names 2018 Buck Super Rugby player of the year Ollie Robinson after a couple of seasons at Ealing Trail Finders and then going on loan to Bedford Blues is now playing number eight here and thoroughly enjoying his rugby as well. Hartbury much improved this season in the RFU Championship, currently sitting in fifth place. Bonus point win this weekend against Richmond. Richmond themselves littered with Buck Super Rugby, rugby alumni. Freddie Hosking, the second rower, former Exeter University from that fabulous Exeter team that won the inaugural competition along with Hosking had the likes of Simon Linsell, Sam Skinner, Tom Lorde, in fact Ted Landre's in that Richmond team as well pulling the strings at outside half. I was talking to Dan Murphy as well, Buck Super Rugby legend Swervin Irvin Murick he's over playing in pro, do you say pro D2 or pro D2 either way Irv the Swerve is having a great time over in France at the moment. And we are back underway. Sol Hyde with another carry. Loves the gain line, Sol Hyde. And I love seeing him attempt to break it as well. Up goes the box kick. Into the night sky. Into that wind. Taken by Yuan Glynn. Looks like he's got some X factor at full back, Yuan Glynn. Here's McCartney. Does well despite nearly losing his shorts. A oh, lovely step and the offload as well. Kyle Williams rip roaring onto that one, the second rower. De Oliveira reaches behind himself. That's a good take from the tight head prop. Now Ben Solomon at first receiver. Say first receiver, it's certainly not going beyond first receiver when he gets the chance to get his hands on it and then mistake from Oscar Lennon. He'll be disappointed. Put his hands on it, took them off, knocked the ball on. And Durham will have the scrum. Jack Hill down there, the number eight, getting some attention from the medical staff who are quite busy and this will be the time when the players will start to feel the cold as well and it is cold here especially when the wind picks up the decision was made yesterday to bring the game to the artificial turf the Alpas arena took some serious abuse yesterday the storm really took hold here in Gloucestershire it's pretty boggy. I think if they'd have been able to make the decision later, they might have been able to have the game on that pitch. Alas, there's no point taking any risks. Player welfare, player safety is paramount. And what it has meant is they've been able to host four games on this pitch today. It was newly laid this year. As artificial surfaces go, it does look like it's in great condition.
of course there's always the question is how it will be underfoot and as we've seen from the scrums so far doesn't seem to be affecting them at all as we go in for it one more time Harry Craven the try scorer puts it in scrum's been a great battle so far boot on ball from Bishop some supporters taking evasive action I don't blame him either because I wouldn't take my hands out of my pockets if I didn't have to hold this microphone either Ethan Hunt joining the Brains Trust meeting just to confirm the calls It's not clean but it does come back Hartbury's way now Winfield oh what a shot that is Paul Brown coming off the wing to make the hit in midfield now change of direction with Brown out of position so the nudge on the left foot but it's not a great one and it's pumped straight back down the tram lines where Joey Winfield is underneath it using the wind to kick it back into the 22 now Will Morris Jonas now you and Glynn Craven bit of fancy footwork from him having fielded the kick Durham spending a bit of time in their own half but don't look flustered at all Davis et al forming the caterpillar for Craven plenty of heartbeat bodies back under this one now Brown's up so there is some space in behind but that one goes out after the bounce there was the chase coming in from Brandon Wood and heartbreak could be caught napping here because Patrick Bishop there's a turn of pace and a foot race but the foot race won by Brandon Wood but he's under a lot of pressure Wood and smart play from Durham it was Will Morris who called it and now Hartbreed back inside their own 22 trailing by five points to nil the Harry Craven try the difference between the two teams since then Hartbury have been in the ascendancy they've been over the line but held up and that is a really good clearance kick takes them up to the 10 meter with Durham will have possession Still around about 10 minutes of this first half to go though. And Durham will hope that they'll have temporarily weathered the storm. And then this you go, I go, you go, I go. They'll be able to take advantage of their opportunity. Davis finds House, who thinks about the offload but instead takes the ball to ground. There's Brown off his wing. Oh, looking to burst through great strength from Paul Brown. There's Braden Barrett taking Durham into the 22 and getting the offload away as well. Oh, but then it just got knocked on. Craven wasn't expecting that ball. It's good thinking from Barrett. It was the right idea and it was definitely on. Great crowd over on that far side. Good few hundred here. Braving the cold, banging the drum. They've not had a huge amount to cheer about in this first half an hour or so either. Craig Maxwell Keys not happy about something he's going to have a conversation with the front rowers showing them exactly where the mark is telling them exactly what he wants from them first scrum of the match resulted in a free kick for Durham since then it's been a really good contest
And it continues to be until Hartbury win the penalty. And that's given the crowd something to cheer about. Kept it in for just long enough to get the shove on. And now they've got the chance to clear the lines and build some momentum again. Still chasing their first score in the match. And the clearance kick takes them up into the Durham half. Again, that one's cleared the fence, so someone's going to have to hop over and get it. Ethan Hunt finds the man, and now Hartbreak build again. Oh, it's tipped on one more time, and Marsh tries to get the hands free. Can't quite get there, but then there's some space in behind. Now the chase back from Will Morris. He can't get there, and Durham back in their own 22. Thinking about going quickly again. God, that would have been absolute suicide with Joey Winfield sniffing around. But more territory for the home team. Other than... The early hiccup, it's been pretty solid from Freddie Davis though. But Hartbury will be aware that this wind is a real advantage. They'll need to get into half time at least on parity. Ewan Murphy doing well. They've got two really good line out operators in Marin House and Ewan Murphy. Oh, good chase on the kick, but great work from Stan Norman. Still looking for his first try of the season, Stan Norman, the Hungarian international. Got off the ball, can get there. There's space for Hartbreed, but the pass not particularly good to Matt McNabb. Needs to go quicker as De Oliveira tips it on again, looking to try and find those holes in midfield, but they don't really exist. Durham looking very organised in defence. It's good work by Norman again up on the right wing. Tipped on to Dolivera who crashes over the gain line. Very difficult to stop a man with that kind of momentum. McNabb steps off the left, then the right. Looks sharp when he attacks the line in space, Matt McNabb. They come off the line to meet and beat Kyle Williams. Again, it's Paul Brown, his defensive effort has been exemplary. Winfield again takes it to the line. Oh, looks one way then the other. But there is no way through for Joey Winfield. Better carry this time from Williams. McCartney. Oh, Kyle Williams gets creamed, but he keeps putting his hand up for work. There's Isaac Marsh, little dab in behind, runs out of patience, and Morris has time to set himself. Out on the full, but he was inside the 22. So it is all legit, despite the remonstrations of Ethan Hunt, who is absolutely fuming about something. 38 minutes on our clock, so we're approaching half-time. Still just the one score, but it has been an entertaining game. It's been incredibly physical between these two sides. Defence is on top. One for the purists, but in a good way. They go to the back this time, and that's more good line-out ball. That was McCartney. It's Joe Howard. Scotty Davis, Dolivera tips that on, now Ben Solomon out there in midfield gets rid of the first tackler but he's smothered by Palatin at jerseys, snipe from Lennon, Hartbury knocking on the door of the 22 again, looking to open the ledger before half time, you've got Hunt in there at first receiver. 
Another carry from Williams in the engine room. But it's slowed down for Hartbury again, so they need some impetus. They get it through Joe Howard. Got Kyle Williams down there, just taking a little breather. I'm not surprised, he must be exhausted. Oh, it's been turned over though by Durham. Freddie Davis, the man over the ball. Again, booted into the night sky. Ewan Glynn underneath it, gets the offload away. Great work there. And Brandon Wood just about manages to stay in. He dummied the pass inside. It could have probably done with going. De Oliveira. Tackle by Monty Royston. Marsh. Oh, lovely offload from Marsh to find Matt McNabb, who races for the line, and we're all square. That sparkling centre partnership linking up. Marsh to McNabb. Gorgeous line by the outside centre. Harbury 5, Durham 5, game on. Well, both teams have been remarkably patient throughout this match. And finally, the patience paid for Hartbury. There has been a lot of guts and industry from the forwards in carrying. But it was the backs linking up. Isaac Marsh, how has he got that ball away? And Matt McNabb smashing through the line, arriving late like an old school Paul Scholes for United. Uh, Paul Brown being sent back. Oscar Lennon splitting the uprights and right on half time. Hartbury lead for the first time in the match. A real arm wrestle here in Buck Super Rugby under the lights in the cold. These two top teams have not disappointed. We'll be back with the second half. So go put the kettle on, make yourself a sandwich, do whatever you need to do, but make sure you're back for the second half. It is Hartbury 7, Durham 5.
Standing by for the second half here at Hartbury University then, this one on a knife edge. Welcome back. Don't blink. This one could go either way. It's been great to hear from some of you Buck Super Rugby fans during the interval. I had a quick chat with Joe Burns, looking forward to welcoming him back to the hot seat when his incubation period following the Dubai Sevens is completed. Looked like he was living the dream out there. To be fair, it's a good job he couldn't come this evening because I reckon it is a 40 degree temperature fluctuation. Although I'd have definitely rinsed him for those sock tan lines. Great to hear from David Lakin as well, part of the Cardiff University coaching crew that brought them to Buck Super Rugby, along with Al Davis, of course. Hopefully he'll be there supporting Cardiff Uni at the Cardiff Clash next week. Buy a ticket or join us on the live stream. That's one not to be missed. But this is not to be missed. The second half, the Palatinates of Durham, the league leaders are out and ready to go. They trail by two points, having taken the lead through Harry Craven, his ninth try of the season. Wasn't enough to see them into the lead at half time because Matthew McNabb got on the end of a gorgeous Isaac Marsh offload to go in close to the sticks and Oscar Lennon added the extra it is it one oh goodness me so cold my mouth stopped working it is one try apiece with one conversion the difference between the two sides as Hartbury come out red jerseys red shorts black trim ahead of a second half that as crazy as it sounds halfway through the season could have some interesting implications as we move into the second half of the season. The first ambition for any team, the first objective, get into the top eight, make the playoffs, give yourself a chance. After that, it's get into the top four, and that means you get a home draw. A victory here for Hartbury would give them a great opportunity to do that. As Oscar Lennon on kicking duty, gets us underway for the second half. Oh, what a start this is! Paul Brown! Pace and power still going, Brown, and gets the offload away. Audacious start from the right winger, then Marin House crashing into contact. Alex Kay has obviously put a rocket up Durham at half time and they are straight on the front foot in this second half Sol Hyde and we go back for the penalty well one change I can see for Hartbury is that big Cam Hollenstein has come on 
a gargantuan tight head prop formerly of Quinns then old Altamians and has played plenty of championship rugby for Hartbury as well scrummaging machine although he looks to have about 10 grand's worth of tape on his right thigh expensive gear that physio tape and he's certainly got more than his fair share hopefully that is uh, just a precautionary measure as Freddie Davis takes the first line out of the second half picks out his man it is Ewan Murphy the sail shark second row in the black scrum cap now it starts to move watch out for Davis he's got that try scoring record in his sights but more importantly he'll want to put his team on the front foot oh lovely work from Craven again he's shook off a defender he has a real live wire ball in hand it wasn't clean ball and neither was that so Murphy takes it to ground Durham first visit to the 22 of the second half dummy there from Jack Hill when Patrick Bishop might have been a better option at the short side by Henry Wills a little dab in behind but again another penalty advantage Craig Maxwell Keys wants a word here Harry Craven and Ethan Hunt having a little word of their own Oh, and interestingly, from this penalty, Durham are going to have a pop at the sticks. The lesser spotted three point shot. Patrick Bishop, this would take him to 90 points for the season. But with the win behind in a tight game. And the first points of the second half. pragmatic decision here from the visitors well Bishop has drawn that one in it was a strange shape from the moment it left the boot and it doesn't bother the posts and Durham still trail Hartbury 7 Durham 5 Durham fire the first shot scoreboard remains unchallenged oh, that one out on the full well watched by Henry Wills the open side that's a mistake from Oscar Lennon the line out will be bang on the 22 and Hartbreak with more defensive questions to answer Fred Davis quite a heavily strapped left wrist on Davis Ewan Murphy again the target man Davis manages to keep the ball in Durham again into the 22 still going forward as well good discipline from the Palatinate pack still going still with Davis not a huge amount Hartbury can do here just five meters short and still moving forward and now it goes to ground Hartbury think they've pinched it Hartbury have pinched it oh the best possible response for Hartbury they were bleeding meters but kept their discipline and they'll come away with the ball and Hartbury have done very well there to just wash off the error the ball straight out from the 22 restart but now 
they'll have another chance to exit Oscar Lennon ball in hand danger not over yet scrum five meters from their own try line just the one scrum penalty in the first half and it went Hartbury's way D'Oliveira off Hollenstein on And it comes from Lennon. Looks pretty solid. Jamie McCartney goes from the base over. Oh, it's been pinched here. Massive opportunity for Durham. It's a second try for Harry Craven. 10 for the season. What a finish from the number nine. And no sooner are we praising Hartbury for the great work they've done. They cough the ball up from the base of the scrum. Jamie McCartney loses the ball. Harry Craven gets his second invitation, his second try. And Durham back ahead. Well, earlier in the season, before the first game, I spent a good bit of time on the phone to Reese Belcher. He's the club captain at Durham, not involved with the first team this week. But he said one of the things that impressed him about Harry Craven is since he first joined the club as a fresher, he has made a massive effort to make everything quicker. His delivery, his kicking, and of course his time on the ball. I think we've seen an incredible example of that there great awareness what a finish on the number nine. Oh, and what a kick that is too drawn in off the wind Patrick Bishop learning from the errors of last time it's only one from three from the tee but that's a pretty valuable one Durham 12 Hartbury 7 and Durham with the scoreboard in their favour and the wind behind them means that they can take the time to clear their lines back up just shy of halfway. Good composure there from Will Morris at 15. Fantastic conversion that was. The wind bit that one. It didn't bite the penalty previously. Ben Solomon. He's met by Marin House. Now Lennon. Looks one way, then the other. Then back left. Kyle Williams. That is at Marsh. Great pass from him. Always looking to get to the gain line and either crash through it or put someone else through a hole Winfield just throws that one into mid-air and oh that's a high tackle Jamie McCartney brought down via his neck Nick Jonas the guilty party careering back into position there before Craig Maxwell Keys collars him Ten minutes of the second half gone. The story so far, Durham receiving the kickoff. Paul Brown bursting them back into the Hartbury half. Opportunity to score three points from the tee, not taken advantage of by Patrick Bishop. But it's been all Durham. They've scored the one try from Harry Craven mistake from Jamie McCartney to cough the ball up but then Craven deadly finish and then a great conversion too another mistake off the boot that one well they've still got the line out but probably 40 meters further up the field than they'd like it 
Plenty of time left for Hartbreed to amend these errors. But a few too many for Dan Murphy's liking, I'm sure. Quick ball off the top. Now Winfield. Again, looking to send the big men forward. This time it is Jamie McCartney. Keeps hold of it. Oh, inside ball. Lovely wraparound to create some space. There's Winfield. Thinks about passing to Glynn, but holds on to it instead. So Marsh steps in at first receiver. Again, it's McCartney as the option. Marsh again. He's got Ben Solomon outside him, but he skips out both the big men. And there's the try scorer, McNabb. Takes them up to the 10 metre line. Again, up the short side. Plenty of width to work with now for Hartbury. Oh, what a shot that is on Ethan Hunt. But no advantage coming. Now Hunt will not thank the scrum half for that hospital ball and he got drilled so another penalty for Hartbury and Joey Winfield checking the wind I'm not sure throwing rubber crumb in the air quite has the same effect as breaking off some bits of grass but what I can tell you Joey as that is a stunning nudge well he's made up for the last one and it is blowing a gale directly into his face so he's done very well there indeed and I'm not saying the game's gone soft but the battery's just gone dead in my electric gilet and I am freezing Ethan Hunt six meters out needs to find his man does Hartbury looking for their first score of the second half and they're getting ever closer Hunt now takes the position at the back Hartbury two meters short back starting to add their weight as well which does leave them short in open play if they do decide to go wide but the ball doesn't appear to be going anywhere Hartbury brought to ground penalty advantage coming so a free go at it for the corner Hartbury well, not into touch that was the top coming off the flag as opposed to the flag going up still penalty advantage Hartbury keeping it tight trailing in the match best opportunity of the half for them so far oh a little dummy and a great tackle try saving tackle and Brown over the ball oh how important will that tackle be Matthew McNabb looking for his second try gets scragged around the ankles then Paul Brown was straight over the ball well Brown much talked about because of his pace but his defensive work has been exemplary in this match a Hartbury opting for the scrum So Stan Norman has taken a position on the blind side we're in number 14 on the open side it's Winfield then Marsh then McNabb then Ewan Glynn and then Brandon Wood so five on the open side one on the blind side Durham marking up man for man in it comes from Lennon oh good scrum from Hartbury but then Durham come back so they do go up the short side Stan Norman scrambles but again gets stopped just before the line his wait for a Buck Super Rugby try this season continues here's Hollenstein Hartbury building right in the shadow of the posts Scott Davis there adding some weight not a lot Isaac Marsh can do this time oh, Marsh in there again but Hartbury still short oh that's a effortlessly close I thought McNabb had 
wriggled through. Another penalty advantage coming as that Craig Maxwell keys with an arm out. He's a long way away, and my view's the same as yours. Well, Hartbury banging down the door. But the Palatinate standing firm. Big pass off the left hand there for Marsh. Bumped off by Brandon Wood, who gets the offload away. And that is the second try. Hartbury back on level terms. Fifty-six minutes gone, and this game takes another turn. Well, they kept it narrow, Hartbury. Until eventually they had to play it the Hartbury way. Isaac Marsh swinging the pass, but Matthew McNabb with the finish. Two tries for McNabb. Here's Oscar Lennon. Looking to add the extras to put Hartbury back into the lead. Oh, pressure on that from Paul Brown. And he celebrates as the conversion gets put wide. What a contribution from that man again. Was screaming down on Oscar Lennon. As a result, snatched at the kick. And we are level here at Hartbury. 12 all. Two tries and one conversion each. Hartbury have left two points out there off the boot. Durham have left five with a missed kick. Joe Murphy is off the bench for Durham and I thought he was coming straight off the bench and into the referee's bad books. That did look like a high tackle from the number 19 and Durham have rung a few changes as well. So Joe Murphy's come on wearing number 19. Tom Bannett Vala, the Scotland under 20 has come on wearing number 17 and Pepper has come on wearing number 23. Davis then in between 10 and halfway the arm wrestle locked in the middle more great lineup ball though and house goes quickly off the top heartbreak up off the line quickly and that is the dividend Joey Winfield forcing the turnover there. Outside halves going above and beyond. So Jake Spurway has come on as well. So Durham have made a lot of changes to try and change the balance. Spurway, another of the Scottish lads involved. Only a Scottish age group rugby before travelling south. There are plenty of people watching this evening who think Durham and the idea of travelling south are two things that involve quite some cognitive dissonance. Oh, that's a really good scrum from Hartbury. And then it comes out to Isaac Marsh. Lovely pass off the left hand to Norman. Just steps in field and works up the tram line. Oscar Lennon. Carl Williams again gets a bit of a hospital pass. And that's spilled out but dived on illegally by Fred Davis. Just a couple of infringements in the middle of the park here for Durham. They've got away with it once or twice with Hartbury missing touch. Into the final quarter. A lot of rugby to be played yet as that's another good penalty. 
Joey Winfield's learned his lesson. He's not bitten off too much that time. Durham have already been involved with an away draw this season. The first game back at King Coyd. Cardiff Met versus Durham. Cardiff Met led for the majority of that match, but then Durham scored with the last play of the match to draw level. Great game since then. They have been pretty much unstoppable. Oh, lovely little inside ball there to take Hartbury back into the 22. Nudging behind from Winfield comes off a Palatinate boot but ends up back in Hartbury hands. Kyle Williams again. Oh, good pick up off the toes there by Winfield. They come back for another advantage. The penalty count getting on top of Durham. Just a reminder of a couple of results from Buck Super Rugby today. Big win for Exeter. They put 60 points on Northumbria. But perhaps a bit more surprising, Cardiff University travelling to Leeds Beckett and winning 37-7. Getting a bonus point on the road against Kerry Woods men. That is a serious sign of progress and that'll set them up beautifully for the Cardiff clash at the Arms Park next week. But now heartbreak. Back in the Durham 22, looking to retake the lead. Five metres out again. Looking strong in the pack. Well, they're screaming for it to the left-hand side, Hartbury. They've got a penalty advantage again. Massive opportunity to regain the lead in this match. As acres of space, they put boots of all. Where's it going to bounce? Oh, it's that man, Paul Brown, again, saving the try. But again, we go back for the penalty. Real sense of deja vu. Could see what Joey Winfield was trying to do, but surely a couple of passes would have done it. Acres of space. The overlap was there. But, you know, the highlight's real. Again, Joe Winfield has booted that ball a mile. And there's some woodland and forestry behind the pitch here that someone's going to have to go searching for that match ball in. Alas, back to the action. Ethan Hunt finds his man. Oh, it's straight off the training ground and Hunt can walk it in. A third try for Hartbury and Durham cannot lay a glove on the hooker. Quick ball off the top. He stands his ground close to the touchline and strolls over. Hartbury 17, Durham 12. Tough conversion to come for Oscar Lennon. But playing into the wind in the second half has not affected Hartbury at all. Durham started this second period at a serious rate of knots, but since falling behind, Hartbury have responded perfectly. Alex Kay described them as the gold standard before the match. And into the final quarter of the match, they are living up to that top billing. Lennon into the wind. Oh, it's going to be tight, but it's just going to miss. Shaving the right post. And this one still in the balance. Hartbury 17, Durham 12. Jack Reed coming on into the back line. He'll replace Sol Hyde in the centres. One try for Jack Reed so far this season. He'll add a different impetus. As Hyde has been a bit quieter in the second half. 
Stan Norman receives the kickoff. Just wriggles his way up over the 22. Ben Solomon has put in a pretty tasty shift at loose head prop. The big Dane via Hong Kong, Mikkel Christensen, is on the bench should they require him. There's one for Morris to run onto. Did well given the challenge. Craven kicks it into the 22. Thought about calling the mark but didn't. And then puts that out on the full. In fact, he stayed down there. Is that Ewan Glynn? Looked uncomfortable as soon as he kicked that. Josiah Edward Giraud wearing number 23. He's got his bench coat off straight away, so we might be seeing a replacement in the back line for Heartbreak. In fact, there are a few forwards who are getting warm as well. Tell him rang the changes early. Heartbreak, aside from in the front row, Dolivera coming off and Hollenstein coming on. I've shown a bit of loyalty with the same players. So there is the change then, Josiah Edward Giro. Here at Hartbury now, cut his teeth with Oxford Quins. He's lining up in the outside centre channel at the moment. Matthew McNabb currently filling in at fullback. So Ewan Glynn is off. Oh, and Durham a straight back on. What a carry that is. Henry Wills smashing them up nearly as far as the 22. Finer there from Bishop and Durham with the opportunity to respond surely it's a matter of time in these positions until Fred Davis goes over for BSR try number 27 or maybe Harry Craven for the hat-trick Davis finds House. And again, bodies are committed, but again, the organisation of Durham. It continues to creep forward. Oh, what a step that is off the left foot. That was the replacement, Pepper. Quick ball could do it here. A try levels it up, a conversion, could put them ahead, oh Marin House! A lesser spotted try for the Dutch second rower. Seems as though he's been involved with Bucks Super Rugby forever and he has dragged Durham back into this match. Gargantuan carry by Marin House. It is 17-17, the easiest of conversions to come, and the pendulum swings once again, this time in Durham's favour. What a game this is. Approaching the final 10 minutes, Bishop adds the extras, wastes no time either. Three tries each, that conversion is the difference between the sides. It is Hartbury 17, Durham 19.
Cameron Cobbett coming on in the second row. He'll replace Kyle Williams who has run himself into the ground. Cameron Cobbett, Scotland under 19. Whilst that change is being made, Hamish Murray has come on for Durham as well. 10 minutes to make an impact. Henry Wills underneath that. Goes into contact in reverse. Oscar Lennon being called into defensive duty around the fringes. And with these carries, Durham all of a sudden finding a bit more energy. That was Jake Spurway taking that into contact and Craven into the night sky. Couple of players underneath it. They need some communication here and eventually Jamie McCartney does well taking it over his shoulder. Someone's lost a boot. Durham have come away with it. Tom Bannett, Vala. Oh, loses it forward. They'll be disappointed there, the Scotland under 20. Made a big contribution to Scotland's under 26 nations campaign last year. Or last season, should I say. Second minute on our clock. No idea what is on the watch of Craig Maxwell Keys, but it will be there or thereabouts. 17 19. Hartbury put in just outside their own 22. Still just the one scrum penalty in the match. It's gone Hartbury's way. Other than that, it's been quite the contest and we've seen exactly the same this time. Both teams rock solid. Hartbury wanting to run it out from their own half, which they do. First it was Brandon Wood and he gets the pass away to the left. Good yards made by the backs. And Scott Davis there taking it behind the gain line. So Oscar Lennon put in the left boot to it. Good take. Here's Will Morris. Just drills that one back. There's no left winger in place. Well, Morris chasing his own kick well, and that one doesn't go out. Here's Harry Craven. Shoots that one inside. He's got Patrick Bishop, and now Fred Davis on one more to Pepper. A oh, good offload to Davis who drives the legs and takes Durham in between the 10 and the 22. Another carry there from Banat Vala. Hartbury come away with it though. That was Edward Giro. And Hartbury think there's some room at the blind side and Stan Norman does very well. Could have been smashed into touch. Approaching the final five minutes. Hartbreak need a score, need any kind of score. Very much in the wrong part of the field to do it. Oh, lovely take. Under pressure as well. Hartbreak appealing for a knock on there, but no dice from Maxwell Keys. And Durham back on the ball. Jack Reed. Oh, Marin House. Thinking about the offload, it squirts forward, so this will be knock-on advantage. Or will it? Was it knocked back off a red hand? Hartbury back in their own 22 either way. Well, there are bodies strewn all over the pitch here. A bit of the old cup final cramp setting in in the cold, and it's no surprise. Patrick Bishop down for Durham. 
Even though there's only five minutes remaining, they will not want to lose him. He has orchestrated proceedings very well indeed. And I think it's about time we started thinking about man of the match, isn't it? Who's impressed us for either side? Well, the two second rowers for Durham, House and Murphy, have been incredibly industrious as always, as was Kyle Williams for Hartbury. I think Patrick Bishop and Joey Winfield have orchestrated things well. Of course, we have to talk about McNabb and Craven, two tries apiece. As Hartbury make a change at hooker, Will Goffey coming on. Interestingly, he played ace rugby, but not with Hartbury. He was at Exeter and now involved with the Chiefs Academy. Isaac Marsh as well has been superb. Oh, here is Craven though. Oh, the extra roll from Craven concedes the penalty. Who will blink first? Patience and discipline required from both teams. Hartbury have got a long way to go. But a fair bit of time to get there. And that kick is a great start. Joey Winfield takes them up to the 22. It's easy to remember the one mistake we missed touch. But what about all the great kicks we've seen at this near side? Greg Maxwell Keys calls them in. Cameron Cobbett in the black scrum cap, the new second row option. And he is the one who receives the ball, thinks about going quickly off the top. Instead, they crash through Jamie McCartney. So the referee is called crossing there, but there was a penalty advantage. 77 minutes on the clock. What is going on here? Because Hartbury trailed by two points. Surely, surely the poles are on here. This is absolute insanity. What are Hartbury doing? Three minutes to go, they trail by two points. They could kick for goal, instead they've gone for the corner and missed. There are some wild decisions made in Buck Super Rugby, but I think I might just have seen the wildest. And just like that, Patrick Bishop kicks Hartby back into their own half. Shifted on by Edward Giro. Well, will they live to regret that, Hartbury? Or will they have one more opportunity? Of course, they were chasing the fourth try, which would have given them the bonus point. But the first thing to do, of course, is get the victory. Ben Solomon gets met, but then wins the collision. Really wins the collision. What a carry that is. Hartbury up over halfway. Little snipe from Oscar Lennon. Could be in for an 80-minute shift at scrum half here, Lennon. Head down from me. One minute left on our clock and Durham win the penalty. That is enormous. Heartbreak 17, Durham 19. Kick for touch from Patrick Bishop. 30 seconds left on our clock. Time for player of the match. I'm not going to tell you the fable about giving it to an Exeter player here at Hartbury and Hartbury ends up winning the game but that is definitely something that could be on the cards, isn't it? Hartbury. Outside their own 22 now. The bell has rung at the last chance saloon.
great line speed from Durham unbelievable energy Cameron Hollenstein rear carry from him but gets over the gain line of course he does little peel out the back again Durham just need to be disciplined in defense here no penalties no piggybacks and the opposites happen they've won the penalty Well, there must still be plenty of time left because they're thinking about what to do here. Now, it is kickable with the wind and this would put them more than a penalty goal ahead, but instead Patrick Bishop dabs for the corner and it's Durham who are now in pole position for the bonus point victory. Hartbury pinch it now are they gonna have a go from deep Brown fires up into the line and does that create some space outside or not quite because Brown's there again he's another one who's got to be in the conversation for man of the match but eventually I'm gonna have to stop sitting on the fence and just award it aren't I So our clock is red. It is all down to the referee now. We've got no communication with him. We can't hear him. We don't know how much time's left. But it is Durham put in. Morgan James is the replacement scrum half. Coming on for Harry Craven. Two tries for him, 10 for the season. And when I do come off the fence, maybe, just maybe, he might be the man who gets the nod. You've got Patrick Bishop now, taking a position directly behind the scrum. Durham, with three men to his left, very narrow. Can Hartbury put the squeeze on, but it's moving forward in Durham's direction. reset the scrum well, the Hartbury faithful still in good voice but I've got a feeling they're going to be on the losing side this evening it's been a fantastic game three tries apiece just the one conversion the difference Morgan James again the shove comes on from Hartbrick and that is all she wrote opportunities for both sides but ultimately it is Durham who come out on top two points the difference and that tells the story of exactly how close this one was the lead went back and forth between both sides Two tries for Matthew McNabb, two for Harry Craven, but it was the old war horse, Marin House, who scored the decisive try, converted by Patrick Bishop, who moves up over 90 points for the season. That was the difference between the two sides. Hartbury 17, Durham 19. Hartbury with that chance to kick for goal towards the end of the match. It was a tough kick into the wind but surely you've got to take those opportunities. I'm going to head down pitch side to try and get some exclusive post-match reaction. Enjoy the try lights, six in total, and I'll be back shortly.
to another Bucks Super Rugby epic. Durham with another victory on their quest to go back to back in Bucks Super Rugby 1917, the full time score. Hoping to hear from man of the match Harry Craven and maybe a winning coach in Alex Kay. I can see him over there. Georgie is going to try and bring him over. But after a victory like that, I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to have a long word with his team in congratulations because that is some performance to come down here in the cold, in the wet and come away with four points. Both teams had opportunities. And it was the boot of Patrick Bishop, the difference between the sides. A little recap of the match then. As it ebbed and it flowed. Freddie Davis and Alex Kay over there embracing the skipper, unable to add to his try tally. It was Harry Craven who opened the scoring, then Hartbury responded. When they scored that training ground try, they couldn't lay a glove on Ethan Hunt as he went over. It looked as though all of the momentum was with Hartbury, but then Marin House, the old campaigner, the second rower, crashed over. And it was converted by Patrick Bishop. Just while we're waiting, for some players, for some coaches, for whoever wants to come and have a conversation with us. A reminder that next week you can join us live from Cardiff Arms Park, the final game of the year, 2021. And what a year it has been. What a year it has been. And we do have a man of the match. Uh, congratulations, well played. Uh, two tries, 10 for the season. But first of all, let's talk about the victory. To come down here in the cold, in the wet, and come away with four points and keep the momentum going, that's a pretty fantastic feeling. Yeah, I loved every second of it. Uh, God, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but I'm so proud of the boys to stick out right to the end. And, but yeah, it was quick, but yeah, I loved every minute of it. Let's talk about the first try then, because when the line-out comes down, anybody who watches Durham, they think, well, Freddie Davis is going over here. It didn't happen. You saw the tiniest little gap and you were able to capitalise. Yeah, I thought I'd steal it off him because he's had too many this season. So, uh, yeah, I went. I think it was my first small try ever, so I'll take that. Taking one off the forwards and good on you as well. Um, the second one in this corner here, just to our left, uh, there were all kinds of obstacles in the way. I, full disclosure, I didn't see what happened. Talk us through the finish. I honestly don't remember either. So <laughs> I think it just popped out for me and I managed to bump off one person and then in there, sort of rebounded off him. So yeah. 10 for the season, not bad. Uh, let's talk about the wider game then because anybody who watches Buck Super Rugby, anybody who plays Buck Super Rugby, those are the kind of arm wrestles that you want to be involved with. What a brilliant 80 minutes. Yeah, I loved every second of it. Yeah. Uh, what about the bus journey home? Oh, I'm not looking forward to it. It's a long journey home, but yeah, I think try and get some kip. Um, and then we're back for next week versus Exeter, biggest one of the season probably. Massive game. Another long coach journey too. Um, you're top of the league now. Obviously, if you play for Durham, it doesn't matter if you win every week, if you lose every week, you're like, we want to win games. We want to be top of the league. We want to be champions. What kind of things were Fred and the other leaders in the group saying in the huddle at the end of the match there? Um, every week we just focus on the next job. It's game, one game at a time. Um, yeah, so we've, this will completely raise out our minds. We'll have analysis on Friday and then next job versus Exeter now. Congratulations, your man of the match. I will let you get warm because it is so cold here. Well played. Um, Alex, can we have a, a quick word? So before the match today, you talked about Hartbury as being the gold standard. Um, I think we saw two gold standard teams there this evening. What a game. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think it was a good game of rugby considering... As you say, it's so bloody cold. <laughs> uh, but yeah, both sides, it was nip and tuck and our game of rugby should be. But that's Bucks of Rugby, as we know, at the top end. And it's that's what's so good about it. A two-point game there. I, I don't want you to sort of make assumptions about what was going on with Hartbury, but they had a kickable penalty right towards the end. You must have thought they were going to go for the poles. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a shock. But balanced out with the fact that we probably missed a, a bit of a sitter early on. So... Yeah, I guess that's always the blow, isn't it? You're thinking you can get your 
you drive them all over and, and whatever, yeah. But, it, I mean, it's a bigger win than people realise that. It is blowing a fair bit. So, you know, sometimes it's an advantage and sometimes it's a disadvantage because guys go off the boil a bit. But, no, I just thought both sides went at it, hammer and tong. Uh, perhaps occasionally liked a little bit of finesse in certain areas, but, uh, you know, it's quality rugby and that's what boxing rugby is. It certainly is. Um, it's always great to see new faces in this league, new faces in the team, but I always love it when some of the old campaigners deliver and Marin going over at the end there to score the try that ultimately turned out to be the winning try. Put a huge smile on my face, must have put a huge smile on yours as well. Yeah, he's been great. He's one of our leaders uh, and he does exactly that. He, he, you get what you see on the tin, you know, he, he works really hard and he leads from the front and he plays as he expects everyone else to play. So I'm pleased for Marin, really pleased. Next week, Exeter. It's massive. I mean, regardless of what happens, you're going to be in the top two going into Christmas. But as soon as I've said Exeter, again, it's put a smile on your face. It's another massive game to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about that, you're not going to be off the boil. You know what's got to be played, so we've just got to come out of the trap. I mean, the good thing today was we had 23 guys and they all came and did a job. And, and sometimes that's always a challenge to have 23 fit guys to start with. So, yeah, we're limping over the, the last bit, but we want to go to extra. If we can do that, what a wonderful term. It's been a great term, it's all been. Certainly has. Um, congratulations, you. safe Thank journey you. home, and look forward to seeing you in the new year. Have a great Christmas. Um, that is all from Hartbury. It's been an incredible doubleheader. Thank you so much for joining us on this special day where we've got behind the Rainbow Laces campaign. It is double delight for Durham. They have come here to Hartbury, one of the homes of rugby here in England, and they have taken 10 points. They top both Bucks Super Rugby and the Women's National League. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this wherever you've been watching around the world. It is not the end for 2021. We're back next week. We're over the border at Cardiff Arms Park for the Cardiff Clash. We hope you will join us then. I have had an absolutely wonderful time, but I'm going to give you full disclosure. I'm going inside to get warm. Take care of yourselves. See you next week. Goodbye.